The last topic for today that I have time for is burnout. Now, again, as I mentioned, for healthcare providers, we have some of the highest rates of burnout of any industry you care to study. There's a parallel, certainly, between burnout and dysthymia. That is, there's this emotional exhaustion. You feel burnt out, you feel wiped out, I'm sorry, I, my heart and soul ain't in it anymore. I just have nothing left to give. I don't care. Apathy. It's combined with a cynicism globally of, you know, the healthcare system is broken and it's not getting fixed anytime soon. Unfortunately, that cynicism then gets turned on oneself and it leads to a sense of inefficacy. You know what? I think it's me. I think I'm just not smart enough. There's somebody I'm sure younger, better, who could do this job better than me. So why don't I just exit stage life? Right? And it just leads to, to fatigue, a lack of energy, despondency, and so forth. Now, not all of us are going to be experiencing burnout at any time, at any time in our, our career. But there's three ways to understand who's at greatest risk. The first way to understand this is by how much job strain do you experience? Now, it's interesting that they've added this concept of job fit to, to job strain model. And that is, are you doing more and more things that you weren't originally hired to do? That is, you're, you're doing things that it's like, well, you know, you're being a good citizen and so forth, but wait a minute, I feel like, you know, I'm not the best qualified to do this. Or, I'm flying more and more, I feel, without a net, right? I'm putting my license in jeopardy or whatever it might be. Now, it turns out that it's not the people who work the most number of hours who are at the greatest risk of burnout, but rather those who have the highest emotional demands placed on them and have the lowest decisional latitude. High emotional demands you're going to find in uh, neonatal nail units, pediatric oncology wards, people who deal a lot with folks who are in chronic pain, people who are chronically emotionally labile, and so forth. Low decisional latitude means that you don't have a lot of control over what you do, how you do it, or when you do it. It's all driven by protocols, regulations, and guidelines. A second and different way to understand who's at risk of burnout, especially as it's applied to understanding burnout in nurses and psychotherapists, it's caregiver burnout. But if over time, too many of our self-esteem needs are met exclusively, by being the giver, the provider of care, combined with poor self-care. I mean, what do you expect if you can't run the engine without putting fuel in the tank once in a while? You gotta recharge the batteries. You're gonna feel pretty burnt out. Or a traumatic response. You hear this beyond ICUs and emergency departments. You're looking at people who come back from a four day weekend and they go, we yeah, have big deal. I couldn't stop thinking about that patient that went south on Thursday night before we left. I'm still, it's been two weeks later and I'm worried that my supervisor is still going to call me on the carpet for not having filled out form JY7293 exactly right. You know, it's hyper vigilance and hyper startle response. I mean, when, when burnout is there, we, we know when we see it, as exemplified by this one surgeon telling the other after the operating room, I don't feel quite as fulfilled when I've saved a lawyer. <laughs> Does this look familiar? Wow! Check out the new guy. He's standing upright and everything. Right? So quickly, I give entire workshops on this, but for the time that we have. First of all, if anybody tells you the remedy to burnout is to get more efficient with your time, Take a piece of rotten fruit and throw it at them vigorously. If there is one time management skill that maybe all of us could get better at, it's to more often use the word no. Right? Think about this. Really, why is it that eight years in a row you're willing to be the chairperson for the holiday party? I mean, come on. Why can't you say no more often? Self-complexity. The people most at risk of burnout are those who specialize, who are the most highly specialized. 
Now, we've all heard of um, uh, diversify your role portfolio, or I'm sorry, your, your uh, financial portfolio. Well, this refers to diversifying your role portfolio, R-O-L-E. Now, everybody in this room, in about 20 seconds, can fill up one hand of all the different roles you play in your life. It could include a mother, a daughter, a sister, a wife, a nurse. The question is, can you fill up the other hand? Who are you other than these kind of basic roles? It could be things like, I don't know, you're a master quilter. You belong to a quilting bee. You are um, part of a book club that meets monthly. Uh, you play golf with the guys the third Thursday of each month. You're an expert uh, historical buff of the Battle of Saratoga. You're an aficionado of red wines of southern France. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's like, who are you other than these major roles? Because, again, the more specialized your role, oh, I'm a nurse and a mother, and that's all I am. You're actually running the risk of, of, of burnout. Cognitive reframing is not just thinking about today differently. It's asking good, tough questions like, why is it you thought that you'd be doing the same thing for 40 years and enjoying it every single year? Right? I mean, come on. How about you just draw a list, put it on paper. What, is, what are the things you're doing now that you enjoy? What are the things you're doing now you don't enjoy? It's not gonna be a two week or even a two month plan. Maybe it's a two year plan. How do I start to do less of this and more of these things. Do I just try and investigate, is there an association or a society locally that I could join and kind of learn more about this? I could start networking. Does it mean that maybe I need another certification or something? Where do I find those programs? How do I start taking action? Because one of the hallmark symptoms of burnout is apathy. No, I'm just gonna flop on the couch and rest. Well, balancing that with some action of how do I change things is pretty important. And soul searching, an example of this, ask yourself the question, <clears throat> what words do I want people to use to describe me when I'm dead? That right now, they may not think of those words to use to describe me. It gets at authenticity. Are you living true to your values? Are you known by just two or three people in your life where you can be genuine and real with? Okay? The idea is you, know, you don't want to be having this mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, things are great. But on the inside, it didn't feel that way at all. There's got to be some people that you feel like you truly connect with. Now, uh, we also have to, in terms of soul searching, relevant to this to some degree, is what are the things that we're doing? Are we just following the crowd? Are we kind of putting our energies and our resources really in the wrong things? For example, technology. Guys walking down the street saying to somebody on the phone, can you hang on a sec? I think I just took another picture of my ear. 